N4 H and H here. Gonna have to use the notch trick. Let me show you what's going on. Trying to hear this guy without preamp two. He's a soda station, QRP. He's in California. Okay, hear him. I'm gonna turn on amp two, but then that's gonna create some filter ripple. I'll wait till he comes back. Okay, you hear that filter ripples in there with him? I haven't worked him yet. Maybe I'll try it in a minute. Turning on the manual notch. I'm using a 600 hertz side tone, so I'm going to set the manual notch at 520. See, sometimes if you have to use amp too to get them a little bit more solid because there's some fading, it's going to introduce some filter ripple. That's where your notch trick comes in handy. Manual notch. You can do this on other radios. I just happen to be using an FTDX 5000 MP. Let's see if I can get him. Just barely discernible. If I didn't have all this on, we wouldn't hear him. The only reason I knew he was there is because he posted a spot to the Soda Watch page. Well, that was tough. Um, so if you don't understand CW, I'll just tell you what happened there was uh, he was fading, QSB we call it, and um, I had to ask for my signal report a couple of times. Um, you know, because oftentimes when they're that weak, they're not, it's not just because they're running only maybe four or five watts, but also sometimes, um, you know, they have a, a portable, a little bit of a compromised antenna. So they may not always receive you at a 599. So, uh, you know, in CW5 means perfectly readable. Uh, the 9 means the S unit, so hitting the 9 on the S meter. And the uh, last 9 means how, how pure is your tone, how, you know, how, how good your, your tone sounds. And really, the tone's created on the other end of the radio, so it's on their, it's on their end. But it, it does have to do with how, you know, we call it your fist, how well you send. So anyway, uh, I gave him a 319 because he was fading in and out. That's why I had to ask for my uh, signal report a couple of times. RST is what I sent, uh, which is, uh, you know, asking for a signal report. And I sent QSB to let him know why I was asking because it was, uh, you know, he was fading in and out. I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but he would send my call sign three times. And I would hear that, and then just as he started to send my signal report, he would fade. If he had just come back and sent 
my call, my signal report only, I might have heard it better, you know, the first time. Um, but he sent my call sign three times. In other words, if he'd have sent my call sign maybe twice and then my signal report, I wouldn't have had to ask for a repeat. But, you know, these are ghost stations. These are why I bought a radio like this. Uh, but, you know, like I said, there's other radios that can do this. Um, I just think this one may be the best. I'll put it this way. It hangs in there with the FTDX 10 and the FTDX 101. But uh, a FT991A, up for the task too. And even the FT891 uh, will hang with this. Uh, with this, well, It'll hang tough in these sit situations here. But, uh, but that's what was going on. Um, but I wanted you to catch that I, I went to Amp 2 because he was, he was, <laughs> talk about barely above imaginary. I mean, I, I think I almost made him up. So I had to go to Amp 2 to try to give myself a little bit more of a boost. I was already using my, my antenna that has the strongest gain, which is a 160 meter doublet, 250 feet of wire fed in the middle with a ladder line. It's at about 45 feet up. And uh, that's my best antenna in that direction and also has the highest gain for this band. So I was already doing everything I could with the antenna. And so then I needed a little help from the radio and went to Amp 2. But again, Amp 2 pushed a little too much across the uh, filter. And uh, now we're talking digital filter here too. Uh, you know, over here in the, um, in the DSP, this here where I had it 50. So... Amp 2 was pushing a little bit more signal across that filter, which creates that ringing sound. It's called filter ripple. So I used the notch trick that I've shown you many times on the channel to knock that filter ripple down. So here we are without... And you hear that, that ringing. That's the same uh, tone, pitch, as my side tone. That's that's the way it works. So by it, which is six, my side tone is set to six hundred hertz. So by pressing the manual notch and sneaking it up to, I think I was on five thirty. I knocked enough of that filter ripple out that I could then tell what was him. Because when they get down that low, listen, let me turn it off. You can almost convince yourself sometimes that the filter ripple is CW. So you got to get rid of that. And then leave only him. Now, it may be that once you do all that, all you've got is just ever so little signal to work with. And that's, he was just right on the edge of fading out, fading back in, fading out. And so that's why I had to ask for some repeats, but... Uh, by the way, that that conversation would not have been possible on sideband. Wouldn't happen. No way, no how. Not with the low power he's running. Um, so this is where CW really comes in handy. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. And hey, I want to thank my Patreons, newest Patreons, uh, Keith, David, Jim, Timothy. Welcome aboard. Thanks so much for helping me uh, do this. I continue to bring content like this, operating tips, I hope you're enjoying the channel. Thanks a lot for coming aboard. And the, uh, if you haven't already subscribed, uh, please do uh, click like. That helps the channel as well. Uh, and uh, hey, click the bell and you'll be notified when I upload the next video. And thanks again, Patreons. Again, my newest Patreon, Timothy. Uh, thank you so much, Timothy, for coming aboard. 73 from N4, H&H. &H.